Morning everybody, welcome to another edition of Hook Fishing. Today I'm down on the River Ribble in Walton Lee Dale. We're going to be heading down to a section known as the Church Deeps and down there I'm going to be meeting J-Lo. No, not the South American goddess singer, but my friend Jamie Lord. Okay, we'll get going and I'll see you soon. where I explained what rods I'd set up for the day and the general approach I was going to take to this swim on the River Ribble. It's raining outside today so I've brought the rods inside and we'll take a quick look at those now. Please stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay so this is the feeder rod that I set up on the day. It's a browning sphere, medium feeder rod. Um, beautiful little rod, nice soft action, works well with braid but I actually set this up on the day with a Shimano Aero feeder reel, uh, FA feeder reel, it's a 4000 size reel and on there I had some uh, 5 pound brown in Senex, Senex line. So you can see I keep everything marked on the spool so I know what they are. This is wonderful line, this brown in Senex, really low diameter, I really do like it, seems to have a low memory, works well. The sphere itself, not a cheap rod, but you can tell it's an absolute class piece of kit. So beautiful reel seats, interesting flat handle concept on it, and uh, the gripper section down here, which is <laughs> completely covered in turmeric after the session. But yeah, just a just a lovely piece of kit is the Browning sphere, and the skeleton SIC guides. You know they are so so slim. There's basically no line into those, they're uh, probably the best guides on the market I would say. So I'd certainly buy, buy more sphere feeder rods or sphere rods of any kind if I could afford them. Um, probably the one I've got my eye on the most at this moment in time is the 15 foot version. Okay so that's the feeder rod. So the float rod was again my trusty Drennan Acolyte. 14 foot plus again a lovely piece of kit uh, but today I'd actually team that up with an Abu 507 Mark II close face reel and it's uh, quite a big close face reel to be honest but I do prefer fishing a close face when I'm fishing the stick float I just find it's easier for me to control the float going down the river so some people fish open face and don't have a problem with it. I can fish an open face if I need to, but um, I do like a clo close face reel on a stick float setup. Uh, the stick float I think I explained was a three number four, and I'll just see if I can get a shot of this because it's tucked under the uh, the rod band. But um, I think I said it was maybe balsa bottom in the in the video. It's a it's a cane bottom float, so nice and light. And there was just eight number eights underneath that. Uh, with a bulk of, as you can see, four still stuck right below the float there. Uh, nice long tail rubber protruding over the end of the float to make sure that line just comes off nice and straight. And then the other number eights were just spread around about 10 inches to a foot apart each, uh, leaving around about 10 inches to the hook length. So that was the float rod on the day. 
So the final rod I had set up was the Drennan Acolyte 17 foot, uh, 17 foot float rod. I don't think you can actually see the graphics because of how the bands are on this at the moment. But just about. This is the 17 foot Acolyte. And I had that teamed up with a little two and a half thousand sized Daiwa uh, Legalis match and feeder reel. And these aren't overly expensive actually. I picked this up uh, for a song. I think they retail for about £80, but you pick them up for about 60 65 somewhere of that order. Come with two spools, aluminium spools. Uh, line on that one's just two and a half pound uh, Drenum float fish. And this was set up to a slightly bigger stick float. Um, to fish further out if need be or if the wind got up and it was a wire stem version it's an old, it's an old school float um, it is actually a midi it's a midi wire steel stem you just can't get hold of proper wire stem stick floats anymore but they do tend to ride a bit better than the the alloy ones because they seem to have a bit more weight to them uh, the old steel stem floats so I've not got many of those left nowadays. Hang on to them. One shot just directly under the float, just to help it cock quickly when it goes in the, on the floor. And then that was set up with a spread bulk of five number eights down the line and another number eight dropper uh, about a foot from the hook, which is just tucked in on the uh, on the ring there. Hooks on. Both float rigs were size 18, uh, they were a midi match pattern, can't remember exactly which pattern but just a nice light hook, anything like a, a B611 or something of that nature or a Drennan carbon match which is what I'd normally use, I was just using some patterns up to be fair. Uh, and that, yeah, I never, used, I never ended up using this rod, because um, in hindsight as you'll see as the video goes on that um, Ideally, I think I would have been better off either fishing the whip very close in, and if I needed to go out a bit further, then the waggler probably would have been a better option because there was so little flow on the river that day. Never can quite tell with the ribble. I think if I knew it was going to be a low tide, I'd definitely go with a waggler and whip approach and forget about the feeder and the stick float. But hindsight's a wonderful thing, and you'll see that coming up in the video. Enjoy. Right, guys, so the bait tray today is simply hemp and castor I've only got a pint of hemp so I've got two pints of castor with me um, so there's not a great deal of hemp in there today so I'm keeping that half back just in case I need to mix it with the other pint of castor if we ever start having a red letter day we've got a pint and a half of red maggots they've been treated with beautiful turmeric if you could smell those you'd love them well if you like curry that is I like the smell of turmeric but I'm probably going to end up with a yellow face by the end of the day and these, believe it or not, were white maggots when I got them, but because uh, because I've got turmeric on right now, they're a little bit yellow. I don't expect that colour to stay on in the water, but it'll, it's some added attraction nonetheless. So that's it, simple as that. We're just going to feed maggot through the feeder, see which colour works best, uh, feed damp and castor on the inside, and either fish maggot or castor over the top uh, on the stick float line. First cast, guys. Let's see if we get anything. Quite a mild day today. Walk down here, it's a fair old walk, about three quarters of a mile from the car park, and uh, by the time I got down, I was melting. So I've taken my uh, big fleece off. May take a few casts and a bit of bait going through for these these days to switch on. In my experience, days can't get enough of maggot. The more you put through the swim, the more you catch. What we'll do is we'll start feeding some hemp and castor just on a short inside line, just downstream of us. 
to run the stick float over later. Right, I'm just going to scale down to a size 18 carbon feeder hook. Uh, I've had a few bites, three forecasts, and the fish are there, so they're willing to have a go at the maggots, but they're just smashing them at the moment, so I just want to put a slightly smaller hook on and uh, try and target them, get them to take it more confidently. While I'm here, this is the little feeder setup. So it's a little Camazan black cap, 20 gram feeder, and we've got a uh, matrix boom on there to a twizzle boom which is just kicking it away from the feeder and then that's going down to a 0.10 reflow power hook length and we're just going to pop, pop a carbon feeder hook on there Okay, so that change onto the size 18 hook straight away has brought us a fish. It's made all the difference. So let's hope this is going to be the first of many today. Lovely little dace. Beautiful. Once these things switch on, you can soon go through your bit. So a double red maggot. Turmeric flavoured. My hands are going yellow already. Popping them on that uh, size 18 Drennan carbon feeder up. Fill the Camazan black cap, black cap. I'll pop it out there, see if we can get another fish. Just fishing about mid river. a bite. They do tend to be quite violent takes on the tip when they take them. They bounce it around. More often than not it's better to fish in like a semi-bolt rig like with a tiny little loop. Just let them hook themselves because they can be so fast the bites. But that's gone. Missed him. He's had the maggots away. Fish on. Just rattled the tip that one. Just dropping back as I hit it. Thought I might have missed it, but he was on. Oh, lovely little dace. Hey baby. The fish are topping out there. Fill that feeder back up. Get back out for another one. So just putting it down the same hole every time.
and concentrate them fish into an area. It's going, rattling away. We're straight on this bait. Try and hit it. Nothing that time. Those maggots absolutely destroyed. Was you, was you allowed to buy fishing rods mid month then, Jamie? Off the bloody hook. Right, I'm missing uh, quite a few bites, so where my twizzle boom is and a couple of sh couple of stots just locking it in position, I'm going to put a couple of stots up here and try and uh, create a sort of boat rig. Just make the fish try and hook themselves because this are notoriously difficult to hook. Missing a lot of fish at the moment. They do tend to get more confident the more bait you put through, but we'll just adapt this rig. Sometimes I like to fish a fish a loop style rig without a boom and just put a just put a clip swivel on here and have a have a small loop and then about you know six inches so we've only got Got a 12 inch hook length at the moment, we can probably short that, shorten that down if needs be. Uh, hook length's getting dyed up a little bit yellow from the turmeric, so... I don't think it's a problem, but we can always freshen it out for later. And we have got a cheeky swan here. Keeps dipping his neck into my bait. Come on, mister. Get out. So cheeky. I'll have nothing left. You can have some at the end of the day. Tell you what, you can have some now. Go down there. It likes turmeric. It does like turmeric. Hmm. He's not interested in the ones that are fed to him. He's just, uh, more interested in pinching them out of my bait box. Okay, let's see if this looks as a fish. Back out there. That caster going in on the inside line. Ducks are having a commotion over there. Come on, out. It's rattling, but it's still not hooking itself. Come on. I'm going to have to move my bait backwards. The swan keeps pinching it. That's a bite. Right, fish on. Yeah, that was more positive. Once he decided he was going to take it. It was just a case of picking the rod up and the fish was on. So we're just playing back dead steady. Otherwise you tend to lose these. They, they wriggle so much. We just pop themselves off the hook. Beautiful rod these browning spheres. Use this for most of my breeding on the rivers. 
nice medium range rod. That's a significantly better stamp of this. It's starting to increase in size now, so. If we get a few more of those, we'll be alright. Another bike developing here. Let's see if it hooks itself again. It was a good pluck on the tip there. Swan keeps poking his beak around the back of my tree. Let's go in, let's go in. Fish on. Beautiful. Oh, that feels better fish as well. Maybe starting to pick up the stamp now. First time I've been out on a river for months. It's been so bad around my area. I mean, it's a hundred mile journey for me over here. It took me nearly three hours to get here with the horrendous traffic this morning on the M62. I set off at 6 a.m. Got here at 10 to 9. That's a, a lovely little day. It's a nice stamp of fish, that. Looks like he's been caught before because his mouth's a bit damaged. Which is a shame. Shame people can't manage to uh, run up these fish without damaging them. Simple as that. I suppose everybody has to learn, but uh, see too much of it, especially on commercials. You don't often see it on rivers. So, just gone 11 o'clock. I'm starting to, uh, starting to get a few nice fish now. I probably didn't nicely get fishing until just before half past 10, so I've only had just over half an hour. And pegs starting to develop. Going in on the inside. And have a good afternoon on the uh, stick float, hopefully. Don't need to fish far out here. I found that some of the bigger roach are, are really close in, just off the end of the 13 14 foot rod. Another bite on the tip straight away. It's starting to queue up out there. Let's hope it's a good stamp this. Bosh. Hit that one right at the top of the strike. He was obviously just messing about with it. Had to take a lot of lot of line up there. Often worth striking through, but you need to feel for those fish and not rip the reds off. As soon as you connect with the fish, then uh, stop the strike and gauge the size of it.
on the feeder and it's it's not been that productive really I've only had about 15 15 fish odd bit of dirt but nothing over about 4 ounces so I'm just going to try on the inside now I'm starting a red maggot on the hook on the stick float been feeding uh, hemp and castor over, over this so uh, we'll see if we can get a few running the float through not going to fish far out at all there looks to be fish boiling down there already that is promising it's got a slow pace on it today I think it's low tide on the ribble It's going through nicely and getting indications straight away on the float here. It's quite slow. That's a fish. Only a tiny, tiny dish. It's a start. See if we can't build this line. Try a caster straight away. See if anything's uh, already been feeding on them. I'm going to bury it and just stick the hook in, and there we go. Casters on top. Just let it run down. Little bit of line off the close first reel. That was a bite. Nearly struck at that. So it seems fish are taking caster down there. too far down. And this very slow trot. Oh that's a fish. Didn't even see that bite and it feels a good one. Decent fish. It's kiting out into the river. That's a nice fish. Look, it's one of these big roach. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Look at that beauty. What a beautiful roach. That is a beautiful fish. Good half a pound that, good half a pound roach, just in the top of the mouth, okay, so we didn't quite see the bite off that, but it was on. So we might have to dot down a little bit more, we'll see how we go. That's the kind of spot we want. More empty caster in. Let's get back out on that line.
bit of an upstream wind. It's cool, cool breeze, but it's uh, probably perfect for fishing the stick float. It wouldn't be so bad if we had a little bit more flow. Seems very, very slow at the moment. That's gone. Looks like a days. Yeah. Small days. Straight away, this seems like it's uh, a far better method to be on than the, the tip. Clearly, these fish like to see a moving bait. I do think a lot. A lot of fish are right under your feet though, you know, a lot of people go straight over the top of them. Sometimes it's worth just putting the tip out there. I've had a few chub and big perch out there. I've even had a bream down here from Church Deeps. It's probably, I think this is either the second or the third time I've fished it, but I did learn a, a bit the first time I came. <clears throat> Once a year. It's too far for me otherwise. Well... 100 miles don't sound that far, but when the traffic's as bad as it is on the M62, three-hour journey, it's uh, horrendous. I'm not looking forward to the drive home, that is for sure. We'll keep these casts here and have them going in now and uh, see what we can't tempt. That's something having a go again. Straight away, there's something, something having a go at that. Is he going to take it? Yeah. Don't even have to go fully. Just look at the indication. And then small dirt again. I think if we trot through those, cast downstream a bit, I think those big roach, last time I seem to remember that they hung off the back. So a few yards downstream. Maybe just worth trying to cast past these uh, small fish that are right, right at the top of the swim. To the roach. Easier said than done with such a light float. Oh. Downstream a bit further this time. Still a lot of fish topping out in the middle. So tempting to uh, to fish out there. I think a waggler would probably fish quite well on here. If you wanted to fish out at distance, I'm not sure it's I'm not sure it's necessary. Probably work better than the feeder. And given the flow so slow today. Quite a good method, I think. Let's try overhand cast that to where I roughly want it. Okay. So probably got about four and a half foot of depth out there, maybe five. Yeah, I'm not sure it's five foot, maybe just over four. So it's quite shallow. I think they just sit at the bottom of this shelf where it shelves off this sand bed. And naturally the food gathers there. Something is on that. Oh, I bumped out of that. There's virtually any flow on the river right now, especially now there's a slight upstream breeze. But there's a lot of fish down there, and they are taking. That's another fish on. A small dish. Can intersperse a few, 
big roach in with us, we'll be alright. Taking caster. Never ceases to amaze me what a good bait caster is, even in the winter. Keep that feed going in, they're even swelling for it now. I may move a few more shots up and uh, try and slow the fall down even more because there's so little flow. I don't really need a lot of shot down the line. There's another fish, and the bigger ones maybe, uh, maybe coming up in the water. I think we'll do that now. Just took a few shots under the float. And uh, if needs be, we'll maybe move them back down and shallow the float up. We've got one, two, three, four there. I think we'll uh, just space them about a foot apart. one. Put four shots underneath the float, directly under the float. You see it's just presenting it a little bit lighter through the water. It brings us uh, fish on the drop more. Oh, that was straight away, straight on the drop, boom. I don't know the bigger roach I was looking for, but there's clearly a lot of dace down there. Which means I need to get quite a lot of feed in. Try and feed through them. And get to some of these better roach. Straight on, they're swelling for it again. That's a fish on. Oh, this is amazing fishing. Yeah. Look at this, slightly better stamp this one. Up. Straight in. Fish on. We're doing some damage now. Another day. I may even go back on that. Save. Fishing a smash caster, but continue to fish caster. Because having to change the bait, if I don't have to change the bait, I can catch faster. Oh, bumped out of that one. It was just, just feeding as it took it. Alright, so the caster's gone. 
Let's pop a maggot on the hook. We know the turkey caster. We'll just pop a red maggot on. Push that over the top. It's a little bit more resilient. And hopefully we can uh, take a few fish on the same maggot. Cast in. That's gone. They are queuing up. Only little. Yeah, we could absolutely annihilate these on the whip. Especially with it being so still. I did think about bringing the whip today, but I thinned my gear down quite a lot, so I only brought three rods. I may have changed my maggot here, but it's quicker to put on than a caster anyway. Let's keep that feed going in there. Get us out there. Oh, I thought that was a bite then, but it was. I just missed it. Plenty going in. Let's cast back out on the top of that. A bit unconventional casting overhead with the stick float, but I just need to try and get it downstream and it's such a light float. Something held that up then. That was a lift bite. same maggot, it's not in perfect condition but I think there's so many fish that they're not actually that bothered. That's another fish. Oh that's a better fish. That was instant straight on that. I think I think I might just get away with swinging him. Yeah. Nice little dace again. Trying to get that hook out carefully. Not damaging his mouth. That's it, lovely. So, they are switching on now. They maybe we're always switched on on the inside. I'm maybe just wasting my time on the feeder. I do not have to go very far out at all. I'm going to search around the peg with this float as much as I can because obviously there's not much flow so I'm kind of limited to where I'm casting this to. That's a fish. with the bait. See what hits that. It's come on the inside a little bit more this time. It's dipping. Got a feeling these big roach live down there. It's not though, that's another dace. Anybody ever notice that day squeak? Little squeaky noises when they bring them in? Leave me a comment if you have. Makes me laugh sometimes when we catch barbel, they make uh, funny little grunts. Interesting that day squeak as well. Never really noticed that before. Going in. I'm going to go through some bait now. I think I've brought an extra pint. And if push comes to shove, I'll just stick the maggot in towards the end of the day. So just spawn number eight's down the line now. There's virtually nothing in the way of uh, weight down the line. 
just searching a bit further down that peg over and casting it overhead casting it sorry just to see if I can find those better fish see if they're hanging off the back a little bit yep. another squeaky dace Popping red maggot on. Pretty sure uh, a big roach will take it if needs be. <coughs> Keeping that hemp and caster flowing through the peg. That's another fish. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Absolutely stacked with fish. River's teeming, what a place. I just wish I lived closer. Oh, that's a nice quality dace, is that? Stamp fish. Big dace. Beautiful. Right guys, so I've had a run of small fish, um, I've probably fed a good pint of hemp and castor now, so I've opened up, opened up another packet, I'm going to keep feeding it, it's one o'clock in the afternoon, um, yeah, we ain't had the quality so far, but hopefully some bigger fish will come along, I've had a couple of nice roach and uh, a couple of bigger dace, so it's certainly fishing well, there's loads of fish down there and they're taking on the drop. Try and keep that float running straight down that peg. Something on that lift bite. Oh, it's fallen off. We're just trying to hurry that one a little bit too much. Uh, so we've got a size 18 hook on. It's a micro barb pattern. Just trying to keep these dace on the hook, really. As you can see, they fall off quite easily. I think an 18 is about, just about right. Something's hit that straight away. See, float didn't settle. Kept, you know, just like another 8mm out of the water. Which is probably like one number 8. You probably tell me they're, uh, they're taking it just before it down really. Although they seem to be eating it so fast I think we're uh, we're up very very shallow at the moment. There's only need to shallow up though there's no we're just hitting it straight away. Look at this. Incredible. That's the thing when I'm catching this many, and if it was a if it was a match situation, I still won't bother with net because there's so many fish now that if you inevitably lose the odd one, you just get straight back out and go for another. And it's settled down. Oh, and that's gone down, and that feels like a slightly better stamp fish. Still feels like a dace so though. fish
Oh, it could be a clunking roach. Oh, it is. Let's have this one. That's what we've been looking for. What a fish. Yes. Get in there. Them's what we came for. Beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful. What a belter. Wish we'd had a few more like that today. Suppose you never know, there's time yet. Half an hour or so. Hey Jamie, how's Hello. it going? Not too bad. Lots you of little ones on stick. Lots of little ones on stick? Aye. It's a long rod you've got there. I know. Don't be telling everyone, they'll all want the bet. Is that the uh, new kid in 18 foot? It is. CR10, number one. Very nice, what do you think to it? I like it. It's, uh... Hard to get used to, something so long. Well, you've never had that problem before, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you, uh, There's definitely got a few more inches than I've ever used before. What setup you got there then, mate? It's called... It's called Rough. You're on a, a lignum stick. Mm-hmm. 10 by number 4 and you've gone for a bulk top gen bulk loads the number 6 and then a number 6 at bottom and of course uh, you're because the venue expert no because it's easy to set up <laughs> <laughs> well by contrast my uh, my setup's a lot lighter than that it is I'm on a 3 number 4 a 3 number 4 which, yeah it's probably more like a 4 number 4 because uh, it's got 8 eight number 8's on it but I've got four number eights stuck under the float now and only four, four number eights dropping down the line. These fish are coming up in water. Them poles won't cope with number eights anymore. <laughs> number six is about as small as it can get. And that twenties hook, that's a limit to my eyesight these days. <laughs> oh yeah. I can just about get that in focus. <laughs> it's getting a bit scary for the viewers. Hi <laughs> right, guys, we're probably into the last half an hour now. It's uh, Five to three. So probably going to have thirty more minutes, and uh, just try and get a few more fish for the camera. The weigh in at the end, and then we'll call it a day. And at the quality, I've had one nice roach about a pound. A couple around half a pound, and. Uh, some fairly decent days, but most most of them been tiny, so you know, just, just don't happen today really. Um, what fish out there? Look at that, man! Um, I'm talking to you guys off camera, and, you know, it's gone, gone pretty much instantly straight away. Another one. They've all been about this stem. So, you can't win them all. Yep. All right, Jamie. Get your weight in, mate. See what you've had. In you go, mate. Oh, I've got a bottom in there. Oh, nice catch. Not a bad day, really. Oh, it's got another one in there. There you go. Hey, you've had a good weight, mate. Five pound. I reckon you've got more than that. Well done, pal. Seven pound three. Very nice. Done the photograph? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Show the camera your fingers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're toxic orange, mate. Yeah. That's, got, that's got to take a week to come out. <laughs> <laughs> take longer than that, I'm going to get on to that near yeah. thunder. You've got some fairly decent days in there, haven't yeah. you? There's one or two. That's a real clunker, that one. Beautiful fish. There's a better race, there's an eight belter in there. It's zero. Yeah. 
That's a nice roach in there. Ten. That is uh, it's just over ten. <laughs> Hold it back, Andrew. Ten one. Ten one. Ten knot. Ten in it. Ten pound dead. Ten dead. Ten, ten one. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten pound one. one. I'm having that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, double figures. I'll take yeah. that, mate. <laughs> I'll take that. Right, just gonna just put my camera down for me there, mate. So ten pound one of uh, roaching days with one solitary perch. I just like to say a big thanks to all you guys that have subscribed to the channel so far. The response has been overwhelming, particularly to the Aston Park live match video. It was the first one I've ever done, and. Uh, yeah, you know, I just can't believe the response I've had. I'm over 160 subscribers in the first week, four and a half thousand views. So it's all thanks to you guys that I'm continuing to make these videos. So if you like them, you know, by all means, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a video.